Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be talking all about the movie Golden Arm. We have Maureen Baruka, who is the director of the film, and then Mary Holland and Betsy Sodaro, who both star in the film together. And Maureen, I wanted to start with you because you were initially bought onto the project by the co-writers about five years ago to direct a sizzle reel. And I know that it was like very bare bones, like single camera, you called in Betsy. Um, but how did that really help you when you came to shooting the film in terms of having had to already start thinking about character and some of the visual aesthetics of what you thought this project could be at that point? Yeah, I, you know, when I look back at the sizzle, it, it really, what it did was it set the tone. When, you know, Amory and Jenna told me about the idea, I hadn't read the script. They kind of just pitched me the idea and immediately kind of had a vision of what I thought it could be. And so it was that based on that, that first sizzle that it was like, we should be able to like show a, you know, a little bit of the rough around the edges and show the grittiness and shoot maybe this comedy in a way that you don't normally get to see comedy. So really that was the foundation. And we kind of joked when we were shooting the movie that the opening scene in that bar was like our original sizzle on steroids. We're like, oh, we have real people, you know, a real bar, real down and dirty, like really grisly looking, you know, arm wrestlers. So um, it kind of, that was kind of the same. So we kind of carried it from that original pitch and just idea that I had. I love it. And then Mary, with your character, when we meet her at the very beginning, you know, she's a very introverted character, someone who doesn't really manage to stand up for herself, even in the smallest ways. And right. she's just coming out of a marriage that she should never have been in for the first place and stayed in <laughs> for many years out of politeness. And yeah. so I was interested in, in how you really constructed that initial version of her as a character, because even down to yeah. like your body language, you have a really soft kind of quiet tone of voice at a lot of those points so that then it really works when you build that arc. Oh, wow. Yes, all of that was very intentional. Um, <laughs> I, I do think, I think that the, I loved working with the, the costume designers on this movie and um, Geneva and Jack and the hair stylist, Alex Ford and the makeup artist, Tony Marlowe. They, they really helped me, um, I feel like, visually present Melanie in a way where she, as you said, like does not take up much space. She, <laughs> she's very uh, mild mannered, very sweet. And that, that is manifested in like how she dresses. She wears a lot of like light, like pastels and pinks and sort of uh, non-aggressive <laughs> uh, color schemes. Um, and yeah, I think it, this this journey that she goes on, this arc that she goes on is so fun and so satisfying to play. Like the, this woman who goes from taking up no space to, to taking up all the space and like tapping into her rage <laughs> at, with the help of her best friend. Um, that getting to like track that journey visually and, and physically, even with how the differences in how she enters the arena from the beginning of the movie to the, to the end. Um, and yeah. Mary, I, remember when we, I feel like one of the things that, you know, I look back on it now, we kind of our first conversations, what is so great is I think so often in movies, you see somebody that's like never been like this, be like this. The idea was like this at some point in her life. Cause I feel like we all have those yeah. moments where there's, before puberty or in high school where like somebody makes you small and you start to like close yourself down. So the idea that it was always in, you know, Melanie and in Mary. So it's not something yeah. that she discovered for the first time. It's something that she rediscovered, which was such a great, you know, Mary did that yeah. in such a lovely way. Oh, thank you, Maureen. I, I think also the Danny seeing that, like seeing her potential and knowing what she's capable of and, and reminding her of that and like sort of guiding her on this this journey of like, as you said, Marie, like re self-discovery was, um, is such a beautiful uh, story for a friendship and so important for both of these characters, yeah. And then Betsy, you know, your character is not necessarily going on an arc of self-discovery, but she does evolve and shift and change through rekindling this friendship. And so I was interested in ways that you looked at the character of Melanie and their history together to find the details that gradually would be pulled out of her personality-wise and characteristic-wise throughout the movie as they spend more time together. Yeah, I think like um, just that idea of like, they love each other so much that even seeing Mel in such a bummer of a place, you know, such a small, <laughs> awful place, um, that there's still just such this love driving 
their friendship and Danny being like, no, I know, I know everything's going terribly for you right now, but I, we can get out of it. I think I know how, um, yeah, I think that was just such a drive for my character was this just like, oh, this is my best friend in the whole wide world. Sure, we've kind of drifted apart, but mm -hmm. no matter what, there will be that love that brings us back uh, and just kind of just a rooting, you know, when you love someone, you really root for them no matter what's going on. And so I, I think that was kind of it. That thing does it again. Maybe it's because I've rewatched the movie like so many times this weekend. Um, I think I one thing that so many times, Maury. <laughs> she was like lip syncing to it <laughs> she a goes couple all of times. <laughs> but it's like a Rocky Horror of it all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Part where in the scenes, you you sacrifice. You feel like you know you sacrifice winning for your friendship. So I feel like it's yeah. kind of in there, and it's again such a beautiful layer that she sacrifices winning for her friend, and in the end says like this doesn't matter. Something that's mattered so yeah. much to her and she's like it doesn't matter like this matters so i feel like danny's journey maybe isn't as obvious but it's so in there and it's again it's betsy playing that yeah that journey. absolutely absolutely and then you know because betsy was just mentioning the the friendship between the two of them has been a little bit distant for several years even though there is that closeness i think that brings such a unique aspect to their friendship particularly at the beginning when they're kind of reintegrating into each other's lives and they've become slightly different people since they last saw each other so how did you really think about not just the history of their friendship but that time in between and what that would have done to the dynamic oh, yeah i mean it's <laughs> that it's that like because I, I feel I've, uh, you know, we've all kind of grown apart from friends, you know, and even if it's still like, oh, I still really care about this person, but we've kind of drifted apart, whatever the reason might be, you know, there's a mm -hmm. million different reasons. And, um, oh, no, I forgot the question. What was the, I have, I, it's in there. <laughs> Um, but like the time oh, between and the distance and what that creates in, in their relationship. Right, right. Where I think it's so easy for people to um, kind of keep pushing the distance further and further because you get so different from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of the beginning of like, we're kind of annoyed with each other. <laughs> yeah. Because we have both gotten a f enough far away yes where it's yeah. just like Mel what are you doing I dude? know I, I totally agree with you that there's a there's a there isn't an uh we we we've both lost touch with each other mm -hmm. and I think that there's um there's like a reintroducing of ourselves to each other and meeting each other where we are now and especially I feel like with Mel, she's like her her flame is just totally gone, gone out, dude. <laughs> and how it's... frustrating that must be for you know, Danny. A lot of that was like you know again, what was so great about it was a lot of that was the discussion and kind of workshopping before we would go in for scenes because I think it it was like what what is this character like what is their dynamic? How long have they not seen each other? Yeah. And so when they talk in the cab at night about missing each other, I feel like that scene is just so great because it feels so authentic. And it was something that was kind of workshopped along the way when we would go in for scenes, especially in the beginning and being like, well, maybe, you know, how long have they talked to each other? Like, did they phone, like they following each other on social media? Did they have, they called like, so it, it was kind of really cool to, as we went along to kind of take each scene and okay, what would be the reality of like, how much have they been interacting with each other? Right, yeah. And Maureen, I wanted to ask you about finding the voice of this film because you bring in such a multitude of genres. You know, it's it's a buddy comedy. It's also a road trip film. It's a sports film. And then there's a real romanticism to the friendship as well. So how were you thinking about all of these different genres and the aspects of each that you wanted to pull into the film? I mean, I, you know, I'm just a big movie person. I love, you know, I've watched movies my whole life. I'm obsessed, maybe like too much. I think my friends are like, you should talk about other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I did film studies undergrad and I did film production. That's great. I'm like, I've only ever thought I wanted to do movies. So I think it just comes from a love of cinema and movies. And, you know, I grew up watching, you know, Wayne's World and Pee Wee and Slapshot and Tommy Boy. 
and kind of, you know, also like kind of romantic movies too. So it's, it was a way to kind of blend all those things together. And it is that kind of like mixing of tone and genre that I really find exciting. And especially shooting this movie more cinematically rather than like just a comedy was really important to me. And again, with the help of our amazing DP, Chris Messina, uh, we went to grad school together and just knowing that he could, he never did comedy, but I was like, that's actually great. Cause I want you to, we want you to speak on a cinematic level. Mm. And within that cinematic level, it really transcends into the way that all of you have filmed the arm wrestling sequences. And when you think about it, it's actually really challenging to film entire scenes throughout the movie where two people are essentially standing still for the majority of it. And then there's one moment of movement and action. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I and wanted to ask funny. all three of you <laughs> about how you really thought about the choreography and the blocking and, and the camera placement to bring that sense of like adrenaline and excitement and action and motion to all of those scenes. Yeah, I mean, again, that that was like a big, a big thing that Chris and I would talk about was it is like the same action over and over and over again. So it's like, how do we make each scene seem different? And that was, you know, that was like obviously a group effort because it was Chris talking about camera movement and then Wendy Samuels, our production designer, is thinking like each each place has to have its own vibe. Uh, you know, and in the end, we only use steady cam for the main scenes at the tournament. And then you know, at the opening scene, we, it's a little bit more handheld and we use a top shot. So just trying to be more varied and specific with ways we would shoot each scene and textures that would be in each scene. And how did that in how did that affect you, Mary and Betsy, in terms of thinking about performance and having to really channel a performance in a very still moment, but again, with like exuding energy in every second of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I was really, uh, I... I was really buoyed, I feel like, by Betsy cheering on, like, behind me and feeling her energy, um, her rooting for me. I feel like that, I, there was, a, even if I was being still in a moment, there was a lot of internal motion that was happening. Like, I felt, like, very... I felt the stakes of the moment and felt, like, the intensity of it all, and, and it... it um, even though it was physically not much motion was happening for me, the, the energy in the room and that Betsy was giving that, that I, like I feeling the camera moving, it, it just, uh, it makes it, it makes it have a fluidity and emotion, um, within right. yourself. And like along those, it, it, every arm wrestling scene, there was such crazy different energy in every yes. bar and stuff so like truly i, I mean i don't I really have to do it like you just kind of <laughs> match it and you're just like okay these people do not like uh danny and mel okay that's kind of gonna be the energy we bring into this <laughs> yeah. or like oh oh here we go everybody's rooting for mel i it, it was totally. it for me it was very much just like i'm gonna just kind of or you know, sometimes go the opposite of the vibe or whatever, yeah. like, because uh, it is like, it's, I never really thought of it, but thinking of it now, like every single match, there is this like its own specific yes. energy and vibe. And so um, yes. then it was kind of between us of like, are we with this energy or are we <laughs> against it and kind of go from there? Right. Yeah. Well, Betsy, with that, I love that you were just mentioning how there are situations where they walk in and everybody's against them, but, and your character in particular has relationships and communities that she's built over the years in every single one of these spaces. And I think that's such an interesting challenge because every single person that you encounter, you have to think about what's their history, what's their relationship, what's their rapport like with each other, what's the energy that we're giving each other. And so I wanted to ask you about having to work with, you know, every single cast member and thinking so specifically about all of the details for what might just be a really fleeting like saying hello to someone as you walk past them it was well a huge thing was everybody was so good in their roles so once again I was just kind of like truly just being like well I'll just be Danny and see what happens when we interact you know like yeah it really was so easy to just as soon as Kate Flannery walked on set just knowing exactly like okay we respect each other but she makes fun of me a lot, you know, like that kind of vibe and like Dot just knowing immediately, like this is my mentor, I love her, like she's the only one that can really get Mel going. Um, 
And so it what just everybody was so good. Um and it, it, yeah, so it it was like just truly I was just kind of like I'll just kind of be in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And just see kind of what's going on and figure it out from there. Like, yeah, it was I feel so lucky that it cuz everybody like from directing to cost everything everybody just got it and was having fun and made it for me very easy and comfy to kind of go nuts <laughs> because dot's name came up it would be remiss not to talk about her because she has such an impact in the movie even beyond the fact that she is an arm wrestler herself and so she brought that into the scenes but it sounds like that montage was very real in terms of her giving a lot of details and what i was really interested in yeah. with her involvement is your understanding of like the community of arm wrestling and some of the more nuanced details that you may not have realized just from like the initial research that you all did and watching a lot of matches beforehand and what she really brought to the table in terms of that. Yeah. I mean, what's really cool is like since Amory, uh, one of our writers came from the kind of arm wrestling community that the movie's based on, you know, we kind of had that knowledge and then Doc comes from the more professional arm wrestling community. So it was a really cool way to, to kind of blend those two scenes together. And, you know, in that, in all the training stuff, it was like, you know, we had certain beats that we had to hit for story, but, you know, then other than that, we're like, Doc, let's talk about your real story. Let's, let's bring all of your real stuff into these scenes because that's really what's gonna make the movie feel authentic and shine and feel yeah. proud. And, ugh, Doc. And also her describing matches that she did or injuries that she witnessed or had it was so visceral and I feel like there's so many moments of Betsy and I both being like <laughs> just oh my god <laughs> yeah I mean I think in the movie when she says I won 160 months that was Betsy's real reaction that was the yeah. first, first time Dot had said I've won 601 matches and Betsy's reaction <laughs> really was like oh my god yeah because Maureen was like let's just roll and Dot just go just go and then me and mary would just maybe ask questions but truly it was just like tell us everything tell us a story please tell us a story <laughs> she also has such a um i've talked about this before but i it it comes across i think when you meet dot uh as a as a person and she brings this quality to big sexy that is just brilliant of the she's so caring and has this maternal love that just yeah. it, it exudes from her like you 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 feel it even when she's you know saying fuck at you a lot <laughs> like you, you yeah you like that disappointment where you're yeah, like oh, yeah don't be disappointed in me <laughs> yeah. come on yeah. and it was like with like Anne Marie's um experience and dots like Amory's of this like very supportive, you know, like yeah, it, uh, like someone who's a second grade teacher, someone who's a doctor, but then they get to get like nuts with each other, arm wrestling, but then that intense professional world of like ugh, arms breaking and stuff. <laughs> it was it was a perfect blend to see both that like yeah. awesome community, but then the intenseness of like uh Brenda and stuff you know yeah it, yeah. it was cool it was cool it worked out oh it worked out it man. really worked out <laughs> we really did it <laughs> you were saying I mean there's only one person really that cross-section of acting and arm wrestling is Dot Jones like yeah so what Mary said I think like x marks the dot like that there's nobody else x like, marks the dot make it a bumper sticker bumper sticker bumper sticker <laughs> Well, really? speaking of broken arms, one of uh, the great scenes in the film, <laughs> yeah, Betsy's already like re uh, reimagining uh, the, <laughs> the one where, where Mel breaks her arm. And I love that scene so much because you bring, there's real emotional heart. There's, you know, concern from Danny for Mel. There's the retching of it. So there's real comedy that you play it for. There's gore, there's grossness. And I think that you tapped every single tone that that scene needed to hit. And so it was I wanted to ask you all about just like finding, finding the specifics of that scene because it's so brilliant. Yeah, I mean, that scene, I mean, is my favorite. It's actually one of the scenes that I, when I came on the project, it was one of the scenes that I really was like, we need this scene. We need a scene where she breaks her arm. So it wasn't in the original script, but um, it was, 
you know, and, it, and then once that was a scene that we also workshopped, we, it was a scene, I think that we workshopped even before we started a day of filming, we mm-hmm. sat at a table and we're like, let's figure out like what this is. And it was, it was, it was so seeing Mary and Betsy together workshopping that scene. And then even going into it, it was like gagging, laughing and crying is exactly this movie. And what's, it makes it so unique is that it's just, you know, going between all those emotions. So it's my favorite scene in the movie. Mine too. Mine too. Mine too. (laughs) Because I think what also is so special about it is that it really, like, friendship is so complex and there's so many different um, facets to it. And I think, as you said, like, getting to, like, uh, sort of, dance in between all these emotions and the 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 intensity of the moment and the 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 ridiculousness of me having just broken my arm like while I'm dressed as like a baker it's so it's also uh so wild and and um and being present in that moment And, and also like in the moment where where Mel gets to like acknowledge what Danny did for her, like how, how important it was and how, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I know, Mary, if you cry, I'll start crying. You can't do this. You can't uh, do this. It's just really beautiful to see that scene with Betsy. She made me cry a lot. It was, it was, we, it was wild. It was so much fun to shoot. Mary, stop. I can't help. I don't know what's going on. Mary, stop. Guys. <laughs> That's why we can't have four women in a Zoom together. <laughs> oh. Are we too it, real, too real, too real? Not, it, it, I mean, watching that scene, not, I, I was also, it was, it was as magical watching and filming it as it is on screen. And that is, it is because Mary and Betsy were so connected and, and we had gone on this journey. Like when we were shooting the movie, yes. like, we're actually living this movie. Like it's this love and the movie kind of evolved. Like it, it literally became, I think the movie had a little bit of a different ending and we're like, as we're shooting, we're like, no, this movie is a love story between these two friends. And this scene is exactly what this movie is. So it it, it was just like a really organic scene. And again, just the two of them so close together. Uh, Jerry, who my brother Ahmed, we were sitting by monitor crying too. It was like, everybody was just like, looking over at Anne Marie and we're like, this is the movie. Like, so just, it was really as magical on set while we were shooting. And I love the way that you will talk about the workshopping and a lot of the conversations that you would have before going into scenes. And it sounds like even in terms of improv, that you really allowed the scene to tell you what it needed. You know, some of the scenes were tighter to the script. Some of them had a little bit more freedom. And so how would you kind of read the scene, have those conversations and figure out what fluidity it needed from you and what you needed to kind of like figure out before and what you were going to figure out in the moment? Yeah, I mean, what's really great is, you know, when you start with a strong script that has that through line, you're kind of tethered through. So you have the ability, I kind of like to say, like you like buoy out, like you can you can float away as long as you're tethered. So we can pull, I can pull everybody back when we need to. And it was like this case by case basis. Like there are certain scenes that are, you know, completely improvised. And then there are certain scenes where uh, we would improvise, we would talk in the morning about like what the scene was about. And also I really like to, I think a lot of the times, again, look, thinking back on it, we might actually improvise at the top of the scene and then add the script back in because we found the intention and we found the nuggets. And so you're like, okay, we got to make sure to get our story and our plot back in. So it kind of went by a case by case basis, but it was just having conversations every morning before scenes like. And like you were, we totally did go on this journey and every single day, like, uh, getting together and being like but i think now danny would yes. approach it differently like it was really cool it was I've so never cool. i've never experienced anything like that where every single day we were like learning new things about uh our characters and ourselves and ourselves um, and, also <laughs> ourselves. Mostly ourselves. and mostly ourselves <laughs> uh but it so it was like every day kind of going through and be like i actually feel like i wouldn't react this way anymore yeah. or you know like yeah it was it was really neat it was so neat it's one of the the most powerful like creative collaborations for exactly that reason where it was a it was a constant 
um, open dialogue with all of us where we're all like, we're all tracking what's happening and like being very mindful of wanting every scene to have a, a very clear function in the story and for yeah. us to make sense of where our characters are in that scene and how we can like, how we can make it funnier, how we can make it more, more emotional or more like, um, more authentic. More like, authentic. More authentic. Yeah. That, like, yeah, that was big. You know, it, and, yeah. and again, like, you know, Mary and Betsy and all of the actors and a lot of the crew were pitching jokes on their characters, on other characters. Like, again, my brother Ahmed pitched, uh, you know, one of his, my favorite pitches was, I was born uh, scared. <laughs> that was, that was Ahmed Barucha. <laughs> That's so <laughs> good. I want to be goth. They're pitching Jerry sweaty. Like, it was, it was really like everybody not only pitching on their own, but pitching on like, oh, this would be funny if they did that. Yeah. So it was just really cool that everybody was like cared so much. That's what it means. Everybody cares so much and wants to contribute. And I feel like yes. everybody did feel like they owned a piece of the movie. I was just going to say there was a, a, a real sense of collective ownership, which I think uh, made everybody feel so valued mm -hmm. uh, as a part of the process. And then also so excited like this, I, we all were like, we care so much about this story and these characters and, and doing everything we can to tell it the best way. Yeah. Like Olivia and her, her costume design. I, I had an idea, you know, about her costume and then she added to that or Ron Funch is kind of pivoting his character. You know, I think originally he was play, supposed to play a little bit more sleazy, but then when he came on the project, he was like, here's the deal. He's like, I'll play it however you want to play it, but He's like, I think this guy, his mom was an arm wrestler. His <laughs> sister was an arm wrestler. He loves thick women. He loves curvy women. He loves strong women. He's like, now I'm talking about myself. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, let's pivot. Let's just like shift that prism just slightly and see something we haven't seen before. And it was, that was just like, you know, you have all these great comedic minds. Of course, best joke wins, best pitch wins. So, yeah, I, I also think that's really cool about what Ron and uh, Ahmed and Eugene all brought to the the table and Matt, too, as as like the the men who make appearances in this uh, predominantly, you know, female driven story. They very much were like, we are in service of this story. It's like their characters. Uh, I mean, it says so much about them as as people, but then their awareness of like we want to support this story, mm -hmm. and it's not about these 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 men are in awe of these women, yeah. like it, and even with Matt's character that who plays my ex husband, he's so in awe that he uh, he like wants to bring her down. Right. And I think that that's the that's the very complex um, aspect of Steve that doesn't get talked about. Well, I think, I, think he's <laughs> I think he's helping. Like, that's what's great is like, I yeah. think often in female driven comedies, men are the, the, like, they're like the bad guy. And I love that there's actually no bad guy, like a real legitimately like, guy that's bad. You know, yeah. they each have like such a layer of complexity to them and they're truthful to like their character. Yeah. No one's like malicious. Maureen, I also wanted to talk about your experience directing as a segment director on Kimmel, because I think that's such a unique experience to bring to the table for making a project like this, because, you know, you're going out into the field, you know that you have to get everything in that moment because you're not going to be able to go back and do reshoots. And you really have to pivot in the moment to figure out what's the juice of the scene, what's the comedy, and make sure that you're going to have everything that you need in post-production. So how did you bring that wealth of experience and what are the tools that it really gave you that were the most valuable when it came to making this film? Yeah, I mean, directing on Kimmel is, it is literally the best gig in town. I was a segment director. So, you know, every day you're doing something different, whether you're doing man on the streets, mean tweets, commercial parodies. You know, uh, I think I did like a crotch grab on a green screen one time. Yeah. Working Hell yeah. Screen. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but I think it really <laughs> is that it is, it's just to think with your gut, like don't overthink things because, you know, on Kimmel, you're getting your assignment, shooting, editing, getting a cut to Jimmy live at, at five in one day. So you have to be able to know what you need in an edit, know what's funny, cover your butt for an extra joke or a beat and just move really fast and trust your instincts. And so that really helped on this movie. Cause you did all of like, it was, it, it was so incredible watching you because it was that like, you knew exactly what you wanted, what yeah. the movie needed and you made it just look 
fucking cool. Oh my like, god, it looks it so was, I, I know I screamed this at you a bunch, but like, you're just so good. And it, once again, you made everything for me so easy and fun. And you just like really set the tone on that set every single day that I think made everybody so excited to be there and not, and, and, I don't, it was, it was, you rule, dude. I'm just rule, dude. I just my body. I, I just have. <laughs> I, I completely agree. I think that the, I, I'm, I marvel at you, Maureen. Like I, there was such, you, there was such a trust that we all had yeah. and that you had in us that I think gave everybody the confidence to do what they could do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it it, it was also a very strong vision like it it takes yeah uh somebody she as Bessie said like she knew exactly what she wanted and and but at the same time left all those doors open for all of us to bring our own ideas into it and that just takes a very special person also like we didn't like we rarely went over time <laughs> I just yeah, that's I right. but like I was caught you know because movies it's like oh this these days could be long and I was kind of ready and pumped uh but it truly was like I think we went over one day maybe I mean it, it was a arm, and, arm wrestling day like a right, right. And, it, and even then it wasn't even like I was so blown away just every single day of like, oh my God. And once again, it was like, I feel Maureen, you being at the helm and just uh, getting these like department heads and stuff who also just knew, like everybody just knew what they were. It was cool. Yeah. Like, it was, it was really it was so neat. cool. I mean, again, it I'm happy. Really I'm neat. My, I've left my body. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, Mary, I mean, again, you work with Mary and Betsy and it's like, it's easy. It's easy to say yes. It's e- like, you guys just bring so much, but I think Mary, you kind of talked about it. it. It's, it really is that trust. I think it's mm-hmm. trusting. And for me, I think like part of the thing about directing is you have to make sure that when you say something, you mean it. So like, I would never move on unless we had it. And even, yeah. I think there's a scene, Mary, like the scene between Betsy and you and the dictails scene. I think that that day we, I was rushing you guys. We had to make a sunset thing. Right, right, right. And I, you know, Mary was like, I did we, and I was like, don't like, we got it. Yeah. We got it. And I, and I think that that's where, you know, when to fight to, to keep longer or being like, yeah. I know we got it. I won't move on until we have it. Cause I want to make sure that you trust me that we're going to have the best thing in the end. Yeah. You know, everybody's making me look good. I'm going to make them look good. And totally we get to this. We're going to carry it together to the Mm -hmm. finish line. So you have to have trust. Otherwise everything breaks down. And that just comes from being true to your word and being, when, you know, we ask them to come to this movie, it's like, this is the movie that we're going to make. So me, even though you're, you know, you're getting pushed and pulled from different sides. I wanted to make sure that the movie that I told them that they were going to come do is the movie that we all were going to make together. And that's just being true to your word. Mm -hmm. And it was more than I could have imagined. It was so cool. It was so fun. I'm well, in watching the film, it's so clear that like the directing and, and the performances that like, you know exactly what this film is and you know that there was clear intent behind all of it. And that's why it works so great. Um, the film is out now in theaters and in digital cinemas as well. And thank you so much to all three of you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us.